Welcome back to my bottom 100 worst games of all time. If you haven't seen the first part, then why are you here? Watch that to see the first 25 games I think are worthy of being called utter crap. I think I rambled a lot more with the entries in this part. If they're coherent or not, nah, that's for you to decide. I just barfed out what was obvious to me. So if you see any flaws in my script writing, just let me know. Thanks. Anyways, let's get started with part two. This is going to suck. Oh. This one is sad. Major Miner's Majestic March was created by the same team behind Parappa the Rapper. I like that series, but it kind of faded away after the second game. So a spiritual successor to this series seems like a good idea. The only problem, however, is that this was released early on the Wii, meaning that the team forced in barely functional motion controls. My favorite. This game wants you to be so damn precise, moving the Wiimote up and down in rhythm with the game. If you do it properly, it does work. But I'm not a robot, so I'm going to get tired very quickly with the stiff motion you want me to do to actually get through this game. Why would you do this, guys? The graphics have that parappa feel, which is nice, but the cutscenes are just JPEGs with the voiceover. It's very lazy, especially in comparison to Parappa the Rapper 2's cutscenes with voice acting and real characters. The story in this game is bland that only someone under the age of 3 would enjoy. I really hate motion controls that barely work. They really kill a ton of games. Dude, really? Big Rigs? Would you even classify this as a video game? This game was released in a pre-alpha state. And it certainly looks like it. Nothing in this game is complete. I think the only things that are functional for the most part are the menus and driving forward. This is a racing game where the racing is non-existent. The unpatched version of this game has the opponent driver never move from the starting gate. And when you win, it displays the greatest message of all time. Your winner indeed. I did say unpatched because they actually released a patch where the opponent actually moves. But you still win regardless because they never programmed what happens when you lose. But that's all they changed about the whole game. The rest of the game is so bleak and your truck is insane. It can pass through buildings and bridges like nothing. It can even go up 90 degree cliffs without losing speed and leave the game entirely. Going in reverse is the best because your top speed is fucking insane when this happened. How fast? I actually looked it up on how fast you actually go in reverse. Apparently the top speed recorded is 12.3 undecillion miles per hour which is 18.3 octillion times the speed of light. Holy fucking shit. We found something faster than light. This whole game is complete crap, but it's amazing at the same time. The box that this game comes in has more effort than the entirety of this whole game. Oh. Alright, I've mentioned it a few times in the first part, so let's just get Superman 64 out of the way. This game is pure agony throughout. I actually played through this whole game on stream, and nothing, nothing about it was enjoyable. The story, the gameplay, graphics, controls, the inconsistent frame rate, it's all dog shit. Most people who've only heard about this game thinks the whole game is just flying through rings. It isn't, but they take up 7 of the 14 stages. It's the most tedious shit ever. They do splice in small missions in between each ring race, but if you fail the missions, you need to redo the rings again. If you do fail them three times, you actually do start back at the mission, but why the fuck do I have to replay the stupid ring segment when I failed a two second mission? I don't know. Knowing how broken everything is in this game, you'll fail the missions a lot. Oh yeah, this game is almost impossible to play without running into bugs or glitches. Flying through the rings is the only thing in the game that works properly. The other seven levels the game calls maze levels are way worse. You just get dropped into a stage and kind of have to guess on what to do. Have fun restarting these levels all the fucking time because you'll probably end up falling through the floor or something you need glitches out of existence. 
or maybe you'll be insta-killed by the sheer amount of bullshit the game springs onto you or strict timers for certain tasks. And no, there are no checkpoints at any of the levels. Good thing there's an in-game cheat menu or else I would have never gotten through this shit. Especially the final level which took me two hours. Fuck everything about this game. Oh. You know what, I think this is the first game on this list to be released in the current decade. Balan Wonderworld is one of the biggest flops in recent years. I don't know why I bought this game when it released though. I bought the Switch version, and it's probably the worst one of them all, with really bad graphics in comparison to the other consoles, frame rate which takes a dive in a lot of the levels, and the game sometimes freezes too, for like a good 5 seconds. But that's only the start of the bad shit this game has. The gameplay is more reminiscent of an Atari game because you can only move and use a singular button for all of your actions. Literally six buttons make your character jump. There are costumes throughout the levels you can collect and use with their own powers. Most of them are completely worthless outside the level you obtain them in and they aren't any better for taking out enemies. This is nothing like a Kirby power-up if you're asking that. There's a costume where you transform into a box every 10 seconds, which could send you careening off a cliff. There are many games in each level which are all exactly the same, where you press the A button when Balan is lined up with his silhouette. Much like Rascal, there is no dialogue throughout the game with the exception of the opening movie. But at least in Rascal, the opening gave me a better understanding of the plot. Balan just kidnapped two kids for no real reason. You actually have to buy a separate book to understand what's going on with the story. Yeah, right. Balan Wonderworld is one of the worst games ever released. Screw off. Oh, wait, I forgot about the awkward dance sequences too that happen at the end of each world. Oh, those, those are really bad too. Oh. Another game that went through development hell, Ride to Hell Retribution was originally slated to come out in 2008 but some bullshit pushed it back to 2013. This game is more funny bad to me. It's probably the awful writing and really awkward line delivery from the characters that make it really enjoyable. Jake Conway returns from war and meets up with his family, but then his brother dies to a rival biker gang. So Jake avenges his brother by killing everyone he comes across and has dry humping sex with every woman he meets. Fully clothed, I might add. The game is a mixture of third-person shooting and driving. Driving is terrible because it's usually just a straight line with the stiffest turning ever. Shooting your gun properly is hard to do because aiming the cursor always has it slide over the guy you try to shoot. It like it tries to auto-aim for you, but it just does not work. So you need to move Jake's body in order to get a clean shot. Melee combat is a joke because you can just spam the kick button and the enemies can't do shit against it. Enemies are dumb fucks, because like a bunch of these other games I spoke about, they just charge you down. A single headshot kills every enemy with no problem. Except for those Jason Voorhees guys, those guys just never fucking die. Honestly, check this game out for yourself. It's pretty funny with the weird glitches and story. But I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if you'll have a fun time playing through the game though. You're better off just watching somebody else play and just laugh at the cutscenes. Oh. I've talked about games with long development time, how about one with very little development time? Sonic the Hedgehog, or better known as Sonic 06, was released on the 15th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the biggest icons in gaming. You would think they would take their time designing this game, making sure it's perfect for Sega's main man. But no, they rushed it out. Sonic 06 is an awful, terrible experience. The controls are awkward, they're way too snappy making characters really hard to control. The level design is terrible because they built the levels around 5 different characters each instead of like 1 or 2 like in the previous adventure titles. So levels can be awkward to traverse with certain characters. There are 9 characters to play and they all have their own little issues. Sonic's gems have a meter which doesn't drain making them unlimited and completely broken. He has fucking awful mock speed sections with unbearable controls. Every time you jump, you cannot steer where you're going, so you better make sure your jumps are lined up properly or you fall down a pit and die. 
Shadow is slow as crap and has very awful vehicles which tip over constantly because the terrain doesn't support them. Silver just fucking sucks, especially the ball puzzle. Tails is slow as ass, Knuckles and Rouge constantly get stuck on the wall all the damn time, Omega is somehow faster than Sonic, and Blaze... Yeah, she's okay, but you play her like twice. Oh, and Amy too, but she's actually probably like one of the worst characters to play. Fuck Amy. The glitches are unavoidable and can really mess up your A-ranks if you decide to go for them for some reason. The loading times are frequent and long. Boss battles suck because the camera never focuses on them. Silver's boss fight sucks dick. The story has so many plot holes that nothing makes sense in the long run. The realistic graphics look very odd next to the weird cartoony Sonic characters. This whole game just flat out sucks. But the music is awesome. Oh, and uh, this scene is also pretty great too. Ah! Chaos Control! Time for some classic NES trash. Conan is one of the worst examples of a game starting out way too difficult. First of all, the controls are really bad, especially jumping. You can only jump straight up or at a 45 degree angle by pressing down on the D-pad. <laughs> Why down the jump? You can pick up items by pressing down as well, along with the B button, but if you don't press them correctly, Conan will jump forward and probably into a pit and die. The hit detection is awful because you need to practically be inside of the enemies in order to hit them with melee attacks, so you're better off just using a projectile attack instead. The graphics are lazy and the soundtrack is very forgettable. You need to walk through to progress through this game because nothing is obvious. Like, how was I supposed to know I needed to cut down a hanging skeleton with a sword you get from a random enemy from the ceiling to make a devil spawn to get a triton to kill a lion at the end of the level. I don't know. Oh. Okay, I wanted to forget about this game entirely, but it resurged when I thought of making this series. Gods and Generals is one of the worst shooters ever made. First, the graphics are complete dog water, looking like a game from the mid-90s rather than the early 2000s. Each level has objectives complete, and once you finish all of them, well, sometimes all of them, because certain levels you can ignore all of the objectives and find the exit and leave. All of the weapons you obtain are useless except for your starting pistol, because it holds a ton of ammo and can actually kill things properly. The AI is completely brain dead and will run past you in most instances or gang up in a big pile and shoot you. The AI also loves to only shoot you instead of teammates, so dying is very common and very frustrating, especially on harder difficulties. The game implements an RPG level up system which was completely unnecessary because by the end you'll only upgrade like 5 things, and half of them are completely useless like the stealth which doesn't do anything. I got a review on this game as well, so if this game piques your interest in some way, you can check out my review, which has more detail. If you wish. Oh. <sighs> Another game I beat on stream, Bubsy 3D is probably the worst PS1 game I've played. There might be one out there I forgot, but this one comes to mind as being really bad. It's a platformer with tank controls, much like Rascal. At least with Bubsy, the game was designed around these controls, so it's a little bit better, but it still isn't very good. Bubsy feels so stiff and heavy that walking around and turning are tough to do. Sometimes during a jump, Bubsy will just stop partway through and fall like a leaf. A very, very heavy leaf. The plot makes no sense. Bubsy's main enemies, the Woolies, kidnap him to prevent him from stopping their plans. Yet they bring him to their home planet where he escapes and pretty much kills all of them. Good job. The graphics are just a bunch of textureless polygons which are more at home on the Atari Jaguar than the PS1. The levels are confusing to navigate and boring to play. You just jump on the same gray, pink, and blue square platforms collecting atoms and rocket pieces. The rocket pieces are for 100% completion, but they don't matter because all you get is a shittier ending. 
Enemies like to spawn randomly out of the side of the screen and attack you. It happens so damn fast that you're guaranteed to get hurt and potentially die. The boss fights are really bad because you kind of have to guess on how to beat them. And with these controls, it's harder than it needs to be. Like how is I supposed to know I'm supposed to glide on the gun residue of the boss? I'm still surprised Bubsy got reincarnated in 2014 with a new game. Why can't we just let dumb shit like this die? The only positive I can say about this game are the death animations and AFK animations. They're pretty good. Yeah, the best parts of the game are not playing it and dying. Enjoy your dumb Gold X award, you stupid orange cat. Oh. Somehow, there's an FPS out there worse than Gods and Generals. Country Justice Revenge of the Rednecks is one of the worst things I've ever played. I know I've said some things are the worst things I've ever played, but this time, it's really bad. It's on the level of incomplete garbage like Big Rigs, but with slightly more features. This game is a strange ripoff of Redneck Rampage, which in itself isn't a great game, but it's at least competent. The game has horrible graphics, voice acting, controls, plot, gameplay, everything you think would be bad is bad. The load times are so insanely long that you could probably watch the entirety of The Batman and it still wouldn't have loaded. The enemies and gunplay are all broken and none of the guns fire off properly and your melee weapon doesn't do shit. The game is horribly glitchy and buggy that you can essentially clip through certain walls and skip most parts of the game. Your truck is one of the worst vehicles ever conceived in a video game and it gets stuck on the stupidest shit all the damn time. The ending of the game is completely screwed up because if you don't beat the boss in a specific way, the game will lock up and you can't reach the ending. Also, there's nothing to do in this game after you beat it. The map they created is gigantic, I think they said it was bigger than San Andreas, but except for the places you have to go to, there is jack shit to explore, except for hundreds of zombies and cows, and that's it. I want my $7 back. Why did Valve approve of this game? Hunt Down the Freeman, I believe, was going to be a fan-made movie that takes place between the first and second Half-Life games, but in the end it was turned into a video game, and we all want our money back from this hunk of crap. Hunt Down the Freeman is a broken mess. Even with patches, the game is still completely broken and a pain to navigate. There were so many instances I had to use no clip or god mode just to get through some parts because it was never clear on where to go, or in the case of New Alaska, undodgeable snipers and insta-kill snow. Certain enemies like the Combine soldiers have giant red air attacks in place of their gun. The levels have no direction so you're left wandering around until something happens. The gunplay is not the same as in Half-Life because unlike Gordon Freeman, Mitchell is slow as shit and plays more like a modern FPS protagonist unlike a faster old-school Gordon. The enemies are all reused from the Half-Life games, which are built around Gordon's faster movement and not Mitchell's sluggish movement. The plot is really dumb and rips off MGS5 of all things. The protagonist, Mitchell, is the most unlikable and edgy sack of crap with a really dumb motivation. See, the whole point of Mitchell's quest is to, as the title implies, hunt down Gordon Freeman because in the words of Mitchell, you fucked up my face. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty stupid. The voice acting is all poorly done, but somehow they got a bunch of YouTubers to voice these characters like I Hate Everything, Pyrocynical, and even fucking Keemstar as the president. Hunt Down the Freeman is a big meme and should be removed off the Steam store. I don't know why it hasn't been removed yet. Oh. Making Where's Waldo into a video game isn't a bad idea, Unless you're Bethesda and decide it would work on the NES. I don't even need to explain why this doesn't work. Where's Waldo, a highly detailed picture book where you need to find Waldo, put into an 8-bit NES cartridge, yeah, you can see how where the problem lies. You can't even tell who Waldo is supposed to be in most of these screens. Just click on the screen a bunch until you accidentally find him. The game also has other little activities like a pipe puzzle and a slot machine, which are as fun as you think they are. Imagine playing this game back when it released on a CRT TV. You would never find Waldo. This game also takes less than half an hour to beat on the easy skill. What a joke. Oh. 
Open world early access survival games are no shortage on Steam, but what if one of those games didn't have that early access tag and was released as a full game? Day 1, Gary's Incident is what you think it is, a very early in development survival game that was shat onto Steam as a full release. It's a very lackluster game with several bugs, poor graphics, frame rate on par with N64 games, AI that doesn't give a shit if you attack them or not, really oddly implemented quick time events and insta kill events. Cool, my favorite. The developers actually tried to hide online criticism and probably paid a bunch of people to give this stupid crap 10 out of 10s. Instead of spending time actually fixing the game, they decided to be big babies about it and ruin their reputation even more. It's been a long time since I played this game. According to Steam, I last played it on September 2nd, 2015. And you know what? I plan to keep it that way. Fuck this game. Oh. This one is really upsetting. I love the original Spyro trilogy on the PS1. I played them all the time and would always 100% them. The next installment in the series, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, was a huge disappointment. First off, there are only 9 levels in the game, compared to the previous games which had around 20 to 30 levels. They're big levels, sure, but they aren't fun to go through because a majority of them are poorly designed. The controls feel a lot floatier than in previous games, and the frame rate is always floating around 25 frames per second, even on emulators. The game has so many glitches that you can beat the game in less than 5 minutes. The game introduces new abilities, but some like the Wing Shield, you only really need to use for one level. The Bubble Breath is only for catching the main collectible, Dragonflies, and the hit detection on it is complete crap. While the game doesn't look completely awful, the character models are all shiny and stretchy and look worse than the PS1 models. Also, somehow Ripto is the villain of this game, even though at the end of the second game he drowned and burned to death in lava? I don't know how that works, I don't know how he's still alive. I can go on about other stupid crap like the long loading times on the PS2 or the really terrible minigames, but I'd be here forever. At least Spyro A Hero's Tale was an improvement over this rushed piece of garbage. Oh. Somebody out there thought this was a good idea to sell to the public. Custer's Revenge is a game where you play as the real-life General George Armstrong Custer completely naked with a large boner, walking to the right, dodging arrows so you can reach a completely naked Native American and rape her. That's the whole game. It's repetitive, and of course it was extremely controversial when it released. There's not much else to say about this game. It's a waste of everything that it could stand for. Why in the fuck would you make a game like this? Oh. What do you get if you create a game in two weeks? You get Extreme Paint Brawl. Rushed and horribly buggy, Extreme Paint Brawl was outdated as soon as it hit shelves. By this time, Quake was already out and this game used the build engine which hosted games like Duke Nukem 3D. The guns are pretty accurate to real life, meaning you can't hit shit with them unless you're in their face, but the opponents have no problem hitting you. The game is so lagging and the controls are very sluggish. The game crashes all the time and wouldn't even work on newer PCs at the time. The only single player is against bots on weirdly designed maps that don't represent actual paintball fields. And the soundtrack is just bizarre, and it doesn't fit the game at all. Avoid this one and play real paintball instead. It's probably more fun too. Oh. On par with Superman 64, Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue is another cheap superhero game. For this entry, I'm specifically talking about the N64 version because the PS1 version is actually different and plays more like an actual video game. The cutscenes in this game are so fucking bad. It looks like they were drawn by a child and have the worst, most compressed music I've heard. The game has only a handful of different levels that get looped over and over again. Top-down levels where you shoot energy balls out your ass with just the A and B buttons, truck levels where you rescue civilians by moving up and down, and Megazord battles, which is probably the coolest part, but it plays like complete trash, so it sucks. The graphics and animations are all poorly done, the AI runs at you very slowly and do like no damage, the sound effects are annoying, with my favorite being, hooray, alright, help me, and this game can be beaten in like an hour. The only thing I liked about this game is the cool black cartridge it comes in. 
just play the PS1 version instead. Oh. Now this is a classic shit game. E.T. on the Atari is infamous for being one of the many causes of the video game crash of 1983. Developed in a fourth of the time compared to standard Atari games, which is like four months each game, this game has you control E.T. as he tries to phone his way home by collecting parts of a phone and then leaving. That's it. It's an Atari game, so they're pretty simple. The problem is the gameplay itself, which is frustrating and boring. The pits, man. The pits. You fall into these things constantly and it's annoying to leave the pits because you need to be fully away from them or you fall back in if one singular pixel of E.T. touches it. The AI is poor. They often get stuck between the edge of the screen and a pit. There are a bunch of other oddities in the game, but if you don't have the manual, you'll have no idea what they mean or what they do. While it may not be as awful as it's made out to be, it's still one of the biggest poop stains in gaming history. Oh. Okay, so this game was intentionally made to be a big piece of shit. Created by, probably gonna mispronounce this, Kol Kolun Kurosawa. I butchered that, I know. It was meant to mock Nintendo's strict quality standards for licensing a game. Hong Kong 97 is a very strange creation. The story has you play as Bruce Lee's relative, Chin, who is portrayed to be Jackie Chan, to kill 1.2 billion red communists and destroy the ultimate weapon called Tung Xiaoping, which is just a disembodied head of Deng Xiaoping. The game is a very basic shoot-em-up where you kill hordes of commies rushing down the screen with really ugly visuals and Coca-Cola. One hit and you die. And the death screen shows a real-life picture of an actual corpse. Even with the date the picture was taken. The game resets itself and you need to go through the intro every single time you die. This game did what it was set out to do. Be intentionally terrible. Good job. Oh. Alright, hear me out. Let's take a basketball player and put him into a fighting game. What do you guys think? What do you mean I'm fired? Shaq Fu might actually be the worst fighting game I've played. At least with Balls 3D, I was able to move. For some reason, pushing left and right doesn't even move Shaq, and pulling off basic moves is really hard for some reason. All the while, the AI has no issue and is constantly pounding in your ass when you're trying to figure out how the controls work. The only way to get through each battle is just to spam a singular move, because good luck trying to competently play this game without snapping your controller in half. The graphics are the only positive to this game. They actually look pretty good. But did you know there was a website dedicated to this game to liberate every single copy in existence? It's a, it's a great website, honestly. Also, for some reason, there's a sequel to this game that was released, like, two decades later. It wasn't received very well, but at least people said it was an improvement over this game. So, that's a positive, I guess. Oh. Dark Castle on the computer is an alright game. Dark Castle on the Genesis is fucking awful. The controls are so bad that walking around is annoying because Duncan here, our main protagonist, trips and gets dizzy all the fucking time, even after a tremendous two-foot drop. The only way to attack is to rotate your arm around and throw rocks. Enemies are hard to hit because the projectile is small, and turning your arm on a d-pad is slow as shit in comparison to using an actual mouse. Too bad there's no mouse for the Genesis. This game is also ported to the CDI, where it's exponentially worse. But you know what though? The whole game can be skipped. See, you need to find objects in certain rooms to fight the Black Knight, the final boss and such, you know. But you don't need them, because you can go straight to the boss and pull a few levers and win, beating the game in no time. The music is annoying after a while, and the sound effects are obnoxious, especially those little creatures that go nya, 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 nya. Liberate every copy of this game too, along with Shaq Fu. Oh. Pokemon Pet Simulators why haven't we gotten a full-scaled one at all from Game Freak? I don't know, that seems like easy money right there. Back on the N64, Hey You Pikachu was the first sort of Pokemon pet simulator. Basically, you make friends with a wild Pikachu and you can hang out with it and play a bunch of games with it. Sounds okay, sure, but the game requires you to use the N64's VRU, which is a microphone that only one other game on the console used. 
The mic itself isn't the most responsive thing in the world, but it's also not completely terrible too. There's only so much you can say to Pikachu, only around like 250 phrases. Compared to Sega's Seaman game, which is sort of similar, it's pretty lacking. The minigames themselves are really boring to play, and they're only tough to play because Pikachu never wants to listen to you. I think if this game was released nowadays, it would be a really fun experience with the new improvements to technology and all that. It was ambitious, sure, but it sucks. I have a review of this game on my channel too. Gotta plug my epic reviews whenever possible, you know? Oh. From the same team behind Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, we have a ripoff of Crazy Taxi. Taxi Racer. And yes, this just plays like a poor man's version of Crazy Taxi. The controls are awful and the damn taxi moves way too fast, so steering is almost impossible. The collision on objects is really bad, especially buildings where if you crash into them, you can get stuck and clip through them. The graphics are really poor and most of the textures are just photos plastered onto buildings in the ground. At least this game is more complete than Big Rigs. But somehow, it's worse than Big Rigs, because at least Big Rigs was funny to play. This game is just a nightmare to play. Oh. Action 52 is one of the worst compilations of random video games ever conceived. For starters, this game is retailed at $200 in 1991, which by today's standard is around $400. But why the high price though? Well the justification was that this came packaged with 52 original games, so around $4 per game. The only problem was a majority of these games were just shitty knockoffs of much better NES games. A lot of the games had no instructions and were insanely broken with bad controls. Games like Star Evil would kill you instantly if you didn't hold right when the game started. Alfred in the Fedic and Jigsaw don't launch on the original cartridge and just crash. A lot of the games are generic space shooters. Most of the platforming games have really odd jumping controls where you tap the jump button and move forward because holding the button locks you vertically. Ooze was originally going to have a contest held to win I think $100,000 to ever beat the game, but the game crashes after level 2. A lot of the games crash after reaching a certain point, so listing them all would take forever. The developers even tried to have their own franchise with the Cheetah Man game. It sucks monkey butts like all the fucking rest of the games on the cartridge. This game was also released on the Sega Genesis. Most of the games are different, but still aren't very good, but they're a lot more functional than anything on this clear sack of shit. But you know what? I've heard that the developers of this game actually want to re-release this game and fix all the problems that the game has. I'm not sure if that project is still going on, but hopefully they can actually make this game good. Randy, Randy, Randy. How is it that games that were in development hell end up in your hands? Aliens Colonial Marines has had a rough development cycle much like Duke Nukem Forever, but I honestly think that this game is way worse. The gameplay is again your standard modern FPS, but I guess they forgot about what enemies are present in the game. Xenomorphs, very fast enemies, and your character is slow as shit and can't shoot while running. The Xenomorph AI is really bad and often gets stuck on terrain. They also have a problem present in Gods and Generals, where all of them ignore your teammates and just attack you instead. Oh yeah, the teammates, they don't do shit. At least in Daikatana your partners could kill enemies. I haven't seen any of my crews kill a singular alien or soldier. O'Neill carries around that big ass smart gun the whole fucking game and is unable to hit jack shit with it. Trying to hit enemies is also frustrating because even though your crosshair is on the enemy, nothing will happen if you shoot them. It was found out that bullets come out of the player model rather than the gun. What? The level design is very linear and repetitive. Pretty much all the levels you just shoot behind boxes at the same few enemies. I think you actually fight more human enemies than you do aliens in this game. The game's graphics and cutscenes are really poor. None of the characters are memorable or likable, except O'Neill, but he's only memorable because he's in the way most of the time. And they are so poorly animated in each cutscene. They barely emote at all. It's like their faces are frozen in time. The final boss is a complete joke too. Just press two switches at the right time to fling the alien queen off the ship. And that's it. I heard the multiplayer mode was decent, but I never tried it. 
and I gotta give credit to Templar GFX who spent a ton of time trying to fix this abomination. But despite his efforts, the game still has major problems up the ass. But at least he cares enough to fix it. Unlike you, Randy, at least Alien Isolation, which was the follow-up game, was amazing. And luckily, Randy didn't touch that one.